I'm Jane Lavino, the Sugden Family Curator of Education here at the National Museum of Wildlife Art. And with me is Annabelle Lurch, who is a wonderful docent and volunteer at the museum. She has, for the past 15 years, been doing a great job of interpreting our collection and giving tours. And Annabelle has been with me today. We've been looking at this exhibit of Carl Bodmer's work called Travels in the Interior of North America. And I thought I'd start, Annabelle, just by asking mm -hmm. you a very basic question. Right. Who is this Carl Bodmer? Well, Carl Bodmer was born in Zurich, Switzerland in 1809. And as a teenager, he was um, apprenticed to his uncle, who was a prominent engraver at that time. When he was a little bit older, he worked as a painter and engraver and focused on um, the urban landscapes of the Rhine River in Germany. Why is a Swiss artist so important to this museum whose primary focus is on wildlife of North America? Well, because when he was painting one day by the Rhine River, a uh, German prince, Maximilian Avid, actually uh, engaged him in conversation and found out that he was a pretty good artist and that he uh, could paint landscapes. And he invited him to um, actually accompany him on a scientific expedition to North America. The prince had invited uh, Carl to participate with him because he wanted someone who could paint landscapes but also could do figures and, uh, accurately and correctly. And as the prince said, he also was concerned about um, not impacting his uh, pocketbook too much. And so as a young man of 23, Carl Bodmer fit the bill perfectly. I'm sure North America was pretty wild back then. What was the route like? Where exactly did they go and how did they get from place to place? Well, they sailed to Boston in 1832, and when they arrived in Boston, they were very surprised and somewhat disappointed not to see American Indians. So they spent several weeks uh, touring the East, and then uh, they went on down to St. Louis, and there they met General uh, William Clark, who advised them not to go by land anymore, but to take the steamship Yellowstone up the Missouri River. He also gave them the maps um, that he and Meriwether Lewis had made when they were doing the same journey up the Missouri in uh, about 26 years earlier. Could you tell us what a typical day would be like for these two men in the wilds of North America? Well, the steamship stopped a lot during the day for various reasons, and Prince Maximilian would get off and start collecting flora and fauna, any fauna he could snare. Every once in a while, uh, they'd come across a mammal that they were interested in also, uh, some as big as a deer. And he would uh, have Carl sketch in a uh, pen, an ink or pencil or watercolor, and after Carl was done sketching, then the third person who had come along with them was uh, Dry Doppel, who was a hunter, and he would skin the um, s specimens, uh, or the small ones, he'd just drop into a glass of brandy. When he met the native people, then he would also collect cultural artifacts, also to be shipped back to Germany in big crates. Well, in addition to those many crates of specimens, uh, Carl produced 400 paintings and watercolors sketches um, that were also uh, shipped back to uh, Germany. And over a period of two years, um, they collected a lot of crates of uh, specimens and paintings. I imagine the native people were very impressed with this Carl Baumer and with his ability to capture a likeness and his accuracy. And I've heard even that native people today are in awe of what this man has done. Can you tell us a little bit about why that is so? Well, they visited about 20 different native tribes. And when, um, when the, he, Carl would ask the natives to put on their best regalia, and he would do uh, very detailed and accurate portraits for the um, chiefs, for the warriors, um, and he would do s hunt scenes and other activities that they uh, 
had performed and he would record. And so when Native Americans look at these paintings today, they really have a chance to regain some of the heritage that they have lost. So they are very valuable to them. Uh, when they returned to Europe, uh, Carl Bodmer engaged about 30 engravers who helped him put together 81 etchings that um, illustrated the text, the scientific text that Maximilian had written. What a difference between how information is shared and distributed today versus back then. Hmm. But it's easy to see why people were so intrigued by what they were able to capture, and easy to see why people today are still so fascinated with these images. Thank you, Annabelle. <laughs>